The Persona franchise has always been a personal favorite of mine. I would consider it the standard for JRPGs. So it delights me that Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden are both coming to Xbox Game Pass. Due to the pocket-sized nature of both reviews, we've decided to combine them. If you're only interested in one, do check out the chapters in the description. This review was originally written by PJ O'Reilly and turned into a video by me. So let's step into it. Originally released on the PSP in November of 2009, Persona 3 Portable is an enhanced port of 2006 JRPG classic that makes a few controversial excisions to the core gameplay whilst also adding enough new content and combat improvements that we actually reckon it's the best version of Persona 3 overall. Controversial, eh? At this stage, you likely need no introduction to the goings-on at Gekukan High, the school at which our protagonist enrolls only to find themselves plagued by nightmares and attacked by shadows, as the city of Iwatadai is plunged into eerie green chaos at the stroke of midnight of every day. In time-honored fashion, you soon discover your ability to wield powerful personas and must delve into the bowels of Tartarus, the game's enormous dungeon, in order to fight shadows in turn-based combat. Persona 3 was undoubtedly a turning point for Atlas's franchise, redirecting the tone away from the darker style of the first two entries towards the more colorful and cool atmosphere that's become the signature of the series since. More importantly, this was the game that introduced social interactions and a daily life cycle to the series, redefining what Persona was about and further separating it from Shin Megami Tensei, the post-apocalyptic RPG series from which it was originally spun. Returning after all these years, you may expect an experience that's aged badly, but it's remarkable how fresh it all still feels. And it's thanks to the changes made in this portable version that the core gameplay and narrative remain such a joy to get to grips with. Persona 3 Portable may have removed the beautiful anime cutscenes from the original game, alongside the ability to roam freely around environments, but its slick visual novel style, which sees you engage in static conversations with characters and hop around locations via a menu system, makes for an adventure that doesn't feel as old or as clunky for modern Persona fans to wrestle with as the game perhaps does in its original form. This version also introduced the choice of a female protagonist to the mix, a change that shakes up social interactions more than it does the actual core narrative. And there are combat tweaks that make for a slicker experience once you're taking on the shadows in Tartarus. Taking its cues from Persona 4, you can now swap between your party's characters in battle. There's a new defense command that allows you to limit damage rather than just wait for your next turn, and various co-op attacks and other tweaks such as the ability to organize all party equipment from a single menu. That makes for a modern take on turn-based combat. Persona 3 Portable, for all that it removed from the original, just feels better to play from moment to moment than the 2006 version. In terms of this new port, well, you've got all the expected upgrades, high resolution graphics locked at 60 FPS, a quick save system that can be utilized at any point during the action, and the ability to choose your difficulty right from the get-go. All told, it makes for the slickest version of this classic that at least we've played so far. And if you've yet to play it, we really just can't recommend it enough. Behold, saucy, zesty masterpiece. Persona 5 may be the most recent and flashiest entry in this long-running franchise, but if you were to argue that the now 15-year-old Persona 4 is perhaps the best that this series has ever seen, well, we'd find it hard to disagree. Assuming the role of Yu Narukami, players here find themselves in the fictional rural town of Inaba just as a series of brutal murders are taking place. You move in with your hard-boiled detective uncle, who happens to be working the murders in question, and are soon drawn into a nightmarish mystery as you discover the Midnight Channel, a shadowy otherworld which you and your ever-eager classmates can enter by stepping through their TV sets. Persona 4 closely follows the foundations laid down by its predecessors with regards to dungeon crawling combat. 
but it also introduces a number of elements that fans of the Majestic Persona 5 will instantly recognize. Dungeons here are thematically linked to the psyches and inner psychological turmoil of the victims at hand, rather than being one big great Tartarus-styled labyrinth. Indeed, psychology and Jungian themes of the hidden slash public self run strong throughout this entire adventure, and your social life and calendar play an absolutely pivotal role in whether or not you succeed when it comes time to battling shadows and all manner of great big twisted bosses. To this end, Atlas has crafted a stunningly deep world, jam-packed full of sub-stories and optional narrative strands to be picked apart as you settle into a daily routine that sees you join clubs, work jobs, hang out with pals, study and just generally live a very busy life. With all your efforts at socializing feeding directly back into the powers and personas you can wield on the battlefield. Time management is a crucial element in Persona 4. Picking and choosing who to befriend, what activities to take part in, and when to step through your TV set into the Midnight Channel all have huge implications and ramifications for how your adventure unfolds. It's mesmerizing stuff, utterly engrossing, hugely stylized, and still absolutely essential. Of course, we're getting a port of Persona 4 Golden here, the enhanced 2012 PS Vita version of the original game that adds a bunch of new social links, a new character in the form of Marie, a new epilogue, and fancy online aspects that allow you to call in help or check out what other players are doing in order to help you decide what actions you should take next in your downtime between dungeon battles. It's the best version of an already fantastic game, a game that's aged superbly well for the most part, and one that arrives on Xbox Game Pass with, like Persona 3, high resolution visuals, a quick save function, gallery mode, and the ability to select your difficulty from the get go. If you've yet to sample the deep delights of Persona 4, we really do recommend it. It's perhaps our favorite entry in the franchise, doing so much that Persona 5 does, but without the game's sometimes unnecessary bloat. This is a richly crafted and utterly absorbing RPG, and a game that cemented this series as one of the truly great JRPG franchises. In addition to both of these fantastic Persona titles, why not check out our video on absolutely everything coming to Xbox Game Pass in 2023. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more reviews, be sure to subscribe to the channel. As for now, Craig signing off.